I emptied out my stores, blasting those darkspawn. Once we're done with repairs, we should talk. I emptied out my stores, blasting those darkspawn. Once we're done with repairs, we should talk. Ah, Warden Commander. I represent Master Wade, the finest... And bloody coldest. I can't feel my fingers. <clears throat> Finest armorer in Denerum. <laughs> I thought, well, we thought that you might have need of an armorer. What brings you here? This is a temporary relocation. The Darkspawn are most active around Amaranthine. We thought we could help. And I suppose the money the Crown paid us had nothing to do with it? Shh! <laughs> <laughs> My men will need armor. Providing arms and armor for common soldiers. Oh, the indignity. <laughs> if we are going to be so dreadfully plebeian, I don't suppose Amaranthine has any proper medal. Silverite? Viridium? Or are we back to bronze weapons? Stone clubs? Wade has uh, a point. He's happiest and fastest when presented with a challenge. If you come across any deposits of ore, let us know. Let me see your shop. Oh, of course. <laughs> of course. Will they ever be happy together? <clears throat> Will they? Manual of focus to relocate. Okay. Okay, let's go. I book ninety nine. What? Dodge. You're back. You need anything? I found an old deposit. <laughs> this will help a great deal. Viridium. Armor and weapons could be made with this. Commander, if you like, we could outfit your men. It wouldn't cost you anything, but some soldiers would have to guard the miners. You'll have your guards, my men. So I'm to make armor for all Amaranthine's rabble? Helen, you abuse me so. It's unconscionable. Commander's <laughs> orders. Fine, fine, I'll work. But I want a challenge one day. Something to sink my teeth into. Forcing me, me, to come to this dreadful turnip keep. Oh, the indignity. 
<laughs> Podrá clavonar. Commander, so this is human construction, is it? My brother said you'd need a stonemason, but he didn't know the half of it. I just fix it. The Dark Spawn did a number on this keep of yours, but I suspect it was crumbling well before they showed up. Your seneschal gave me some fancy decree promising men and monies to fix the vigil, but it's a paltry sum. I suppose it would be sufficient to reconstruct the walls to human standards, but who'd want that? I might regret this, but what would it take to rebuild it right? I'm not certain of the character of the stone in these parts, but we'd need more men for certain. Proper skilled men, not some starving dusters, right? Which all boils down to coin, really. I can spare 80 swords. This had better be worth it. It will be, Warden. Good luck to anyone who tries to breach these walls. Ha! Surfacer Dwarves. Cloud Gazer, Stone Blind Skyer. These are how dwarves describe their surfacer cousins. It's traditional to snort these words with disdain. A dwarf who goes topside for feeds his cast, his cows, and the favor of his ancestors. Once he sets foot on the surface, he is no longer welcome in Ursamer. Still, in recent years, a great many dwarves have moved to the surface. Some are castless and have nothing to lose. Others believe they have something to gain. Some think it's only a matter of time before Ursamer falls to the dark spawn. Then there are the merchant cast dwarves with their frightful flair for business. I met one who nearly talked me into eyeing my own hat. I dare say most merchants don't give a nugget out losing their caste or the favor of their ancestors, not the way they are compensated. Tales from Beneath the Earth by Brother Jenny TV. The Coward. Kitten. Could it be the one that's possessed by a demon? Could it be? Take the fucking cat, why not? It will be done. The long blue. Let's get to him. Oh, look at the cute little kitty. There was a mouser in the tower named Mr. Wiggums. Only company I had when the Templars locked me up. Miss that beast a lot sometimes. But I can't keep a cat. We fight Darkspawn for a living. What do you want to do with him then? I'm not sure. It seems cruel to just leave him. Well, I'll keep him just for a while, until I find somewhere safer. Is that okay with you, Kitty? I'll call you Sir Pounce a lot. You can stay in my pack. Just for a little while, yes? Okay. Anders takes great pride in his appearance and enjoys fine things. Warden Commander gave Anders a kitten as a gift. Understood the kitten Sir Pouncelot in the folds of his robe. <laughs> That's not what he said. Aha! I'm 
more mana or more health. Go with mana. Okay, I'm going for these ones. I use the staff too much to ignore that. So in the, in the first game playthrough, whatever. Of course. Of course. Of course. Look at that! <laughs> Was Andraste really that much of a looker? Don't you think she would have been, I don't know, a barbarian? Are you looking for realism? It's an icon! Just wondering aloud. After all, Andraste did exist, didn't she? What would she have thought of the Circle of Magi? Forcing mages to fight demons. Or will be made tranquil. She was fighting against the mages. The magisters, yes. But are mages to be held responsible for what they did forever? Seems to me that Andraste counseled men to seek their own path to the Maker. But the Chantry uses her words as a reason to collar us just for being who we are. I agree. Says the fellow mage. Oh well. She's still quite a looker for a prophet. I'm just saying. Okay. Center here. Why am I learning up so much? God, huh? What constitution and nature resistance? Let us see. Guardian dedicated to protecting allies builds a shield around a party member that absorbs an amount of damage based on the Guardian's constitution attribute. Okay. The Guardian sheets the entire party in mystical protection, granting each member a temporary bonus to armor with strength and duration both dependent on the Guardian's constitution. Okay. While this 
Emotional is active, the guardian makes a person sacrifice. I don't like it particularly. Let's wait until the spirit warrior for us to make that decision. Let's put on slot if we are surrounded by four people. Ah, no, no, no. There was that other sustained. And this. Reading a storm. Okay. Soap on a rope? What? What the fuck is that? Ah, Commander. Good thing you're here. This one's been locked up three nights now. Good men died while this one was protected in his cell. Who is he? He won't give his name. All I know is he was caught poking around the estate in the middle of the night. I'd say he was just a thief. But it took four Grey Wardens to capture him. You best be careful. Whoever he is, he's no ordinary burglar, that's for sure. Why not just execute him? The Seneschal said it was your call, Commander. Technically, all the man's guilty of is theft. But who knows what else he might have come here to do. Leave me to talk to him. As you wish, Commander. I'll tell the Seneschal you came. He'll want to know what you decide to do with this man. Let's take it on. Peace on you. If it isn't the great hero, conqueror of the blight and vanquisher of all evil. Aren't you supposed to be ten feet tall with lightning bolts shooting out of your eyes? Out of my fingers. I see my reputation precedes me. It does. I know you best as the one who murdered my father. I am Nathaniel Howe. My family owned these lands until you showed up. Do you even remember my father? Wow, so you're the Earl's son. Now it makes sense. My Woo! father served the hero of Riverdane and fought against the Orlesians. Yet our family lost everything. I came here. I thought I was going to try to kill you. To lay a trap for you. 
But then I realized I just wanted to reclaim some of my family's things. It's all I have left. You tried to have me killed? That was the plan. Look, I know you're a hero. You fought a war and you won, and to the victor go the spoils, right? Whatever my father did, however, shouldn't harm my whole family. The house are pariahs now. Those of us left. It's all thanks to you. And now you get to decide my fate. Ha! <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? I understand we have trouble capturing you. I'm not without skills. My time abroad wasn't spent chasing skirts and drinking wine. Then it was wasted. What skills are those exactly? Hunting, scouting, poisons. Why? What do you care? decided what to do with you. Already? Good. I brought the Seneschal for you, Commander. I see you've spoken to our guest. Quite the handful, isn't he? Have you decided what's to be done with him? Did you know this was Nathaniel Howe? A uh Howe? He figures that they would turn up again. The Howes are implacable enemies, Commander. I wish to invoke the right of conscription. You what? I'm sorry, Commander. The right of conscription? On the prisoner? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Hang me first. Did I say I was giving you a choice? I can't decide if this is a vote of confidence or punishment. An interesting decision, Commander. Come with me, sir. We'll see if you survive the joining. <laughs> Make sure you equip each party member with both melee and ranged. Yes. From this true. moment forth, Nathaniel Howe. You are a Grey Warden. The moment of truth. <laughs> Those eyes. <laughs> the How is stronger than I expected. For better or for worse, he will live. This is the news ever and he will betray me eventually. I'm sure. The house are pariahs now. Those of us left. Nathaniel Howe is the son of the disgraced Al Rendon Howe. And among the last scions of the once great family. He blames the great wardens for his father's death. And ha intended to assassinate the warden commander upon seeing by Jill Skip, however. His childhood home, Nathaniel decided to simply reclaim some family treasures. The wardens got Nathaniel breaking in. Ah, Lush, impressed by his. Impressed to hear that it took four wardens to capture Nathaniel, invoked the right of conscription, making the young How a grey warden. Recruit? Okay. Nathaniel undertook the joining and survived. Nathaniel is a sensible fellow who values practical gifts over useless trinkets. So he's exactly the opposite of Gul Anders. Andersville. He's fucking naked. Okay. Let me see what his talents are. He's an archer by training. Okay, 
let's look at that one. He's an assassin, all right. Calls for a forest wolf. Someone's a bear, someone's a spider, master ranger. Okay. While this mode is active, the shell flits in and out of concealment. Because enemies cannot concentrate on the character, each hit reduces their interest in the attacker. Okay. The shell is a master of misdirection, creating a personal decoy that keeps enemies occupied for a short time. The Shao has become more experienced in ambush and deception, gaining large bonuses to axe tap damage while using Shao form, and a permanent bonus to melee critical chance. The Shao releases an airborne toxin that confuses all enemies within range, causing them to either flee or attack a random target. I think this one is not that useful, the ranger one is. And let's wait for Legionnaire's couch. A keen eye and a killer instinct help an assassin explode the target's weak points. Successful backstab gains additional damage, okay. Whenever a backstab deals 10 damage, okay. Okay. When a target is incapacitated, the opportunistic rogue strikes where it hurts, inflicting automatic backstabs. Nice. Feign death now. Rogue makes a swift strike. For all attacks, critical chance. Okay. These two are good. Stealth, I don't think so. Hard seeker. The rock strikes with great precision, attempting to fell a weakened enemy. One last blow. The attack is su successful, a target of elite rank or lower is killed instantly, if it's already low enough. Okay, that's a good one. Ghost. The rogue melts into a shadows, completely evading enemies, physical attacks for a short period. Weak points. When this mode is active, the rogue seeks out enemies, weak spots. Striking each in a matter that increases all damage the foe suffers for a short time. Within the targeted area, a rock disappears in a blur, sprinting from target to target. Now that doesn't work. That one certainly. Ooh. As long as this mode is active, the art mind is clear from everything except the next shot's trajectory. Gain it bonuses to attack, damage, range critical, and range all dependent on the archer's dexterity. That sounds perfect. Arrow type. Intense focus allows the ar archer's perception of time effectively reducing the mo movement speed of enemies who come near for as long as this one is active. What? <laughs> Drains stamina continuously, okay. The archer loose, loses a special shaft that scores an automatic triple critical and then shatters. Okay. The archer's bow points to a sky for a multiple projectiles, alright. Friendly fire. Hits a stunning attack. Let's get the range. 
Ranger. The Master Ranger has led to summon stronger companion animals. Animals summoned by Master Ranger are significantly more powerful in combat than their normal counterparts. Each animal gains an additional ability and improvement attributes. The ranger calls a fearsome spider to fight alongside the party. Marge damage dealer with the ability to web an opponent rotating place. To speed poison. The ranger calls a powerful bear. There is a more tank with the ability to slam their opponents, knocking them to the ground. With Master Ranger, the Earl also gains the ability to rage, increasing damage dealt. The Ranger calls a Great Forest Wolf. The Wolf is a more damage dealer with the ability to howl, reducing armor defenses. The Wolf also gains Shred, Automatical, Critical, and Healing. Okay. Let's get that one. These two passives I like. Let's get that. Nathaniel How. Then I get a How something a, a little bit earlier. How. How. Boo. That's it. Is this what I think it is? It is. That's the Howe Crest burned into the wood right there. This is my grandfather's bow. Or rather, my grandfather was the last to use it. It was originally made for an ancestor during the Exalted Marches. Wasn't it used afterwards? Well, my father hid it away, I guess. I'm surprised he didn't simply have it destroyed. I remember finding it before Father sent me to the Free Marches. A shame for it to sit in storage. Thank you. It's good to have a part of my family's legacy again. Something to be proud of. Okay. I'm glad he approves. Let's continue. Can talk to him. Let's finish equipping his fucking ass. I think it's time to re relieve. Now let's keep others the way he is. I find that isn't enough. Replacement. The Beast Master. are always fucking stupid. Those little cups. I mean. Is there anything cunning, huh? That was easy. Let's talk to him a little bit more. Ah, this is Anders actually. So what would you do if you didn't have to be a Grey Warden? I don't have to do anything. Really? 
Once you drink the blood, it's all downhill, eh? I've never liked the idea of being trapped somewhere, to be honest. It reminds me of the Circle. After my seventh escape attempt, you'd think they'd have given me credit for trying. And they didn't just make you tranquil? They can't make you tranquil once you've passed your harrowing. I'll wager they regret that rule. <laughs> the only thing I ever missed about the circle was that cat, to be honest. They let you have a cat in the tower? Mr. Wiggums, he wasn't my cat, he was the tower's mouser. But he took a liking to me. There were days when that stupid cat was the only person I saw. Except for it not being a person. Still, I liked him. Poor Mr. Wiggums. Why? Poor Mr. Wiggins. He became possessed by a rage demon. <laughs> but he did take out three Templars. Oh, I was never more proud. A toast to Mr. Wiggums. Don't you agree, Sir Pounce a lot? Who's <laughs> a good kitty? You are. Oh, yes, 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 you are. <laughs> oh, fucking Anders. May I be of service? Yes. Of course. Yes, you may. May I be of service? Yes. Certainly. Ah, Lirium, give it here. Okay. Battle Mage. Yes. Mr. Wigan. Sword bite new. Fuck. No wonder. Swap on a rope. Can I? Okay. We're going to sell Mr. Wigan. Chevalier. Okay. Let's give that to Mr. Howe. Oh, I've always wanted one of these. Okay. Basils and their leech. Some kingdoms rigidly define the rights of basils and their duty to their leech. In Ferelden, a relatively new kingdom, the Arles and Arles has theoretically command their Arlings, bands, and lords. In practice, those are Lessers are often suddenly maintain their own independence. Some Ferelden vassals must be goaded instead of ordered, swayed, not ruled. Vassals owe military obligations to their leech, yet often deny even sworn oaths and seek <laughs> signed contracts. In contrast, the vassals expect their leech protection despite provocation otherwise. Successful Ferelden leech applies force, persuasion, and duplicity in equal measure. From a guide to statecraft published anonymously.
need something pummeled, just say the word. Okay, let's talk to my people. 